Bismillahirrahmanirrahim and uh, welcome back to this next video and this is the seventh video of the chapter two of immunology. So in this chapter two we started our discussion on the uh, granulocytes and the agranulocytes which are the two important types of the white blood cells and first we are focusing on the granulocytes and in the granulocyte I'm focusing on the neutrophils from the last couple of videos and uh, from the last two videos we are focusing on the granules uh, which are present in the neutrophils so as there are granules present in the neutrophils so we keep them in the granulocytes class uh, there are like uh, four types of the granules i've told you and we are focusing on the primary granules which are also known as the uh, azerophilic granules and uh, we are discussing the uh, different important antimicrobial components present in the primary or the azerophilic granules so in my last two videos i gave you a, a detailed discussion on the functions of the myropod oxidase then we talked about the defensins two of the important uh, antimicrobial components present in the primary granules of the neutrophils now in this particular video i want to focus on another important component which is present in the primary granules of the neutrophils and that is the lysozyme now this lysozyme is uh, you can say a very famous and a very important enzyme because it is not only found in the primary granules of the neutrophils but it is also present in uh, different body fluids like the uh, tears, the saliva and the mucus. And the function of the uh, lysozyme is to prevent us uh, from the bacterial infections. So whenever there is bacteria, uh, so the tears, the saliva, the mucus, uh, they do contain these lysozymes and when there is an infection for example then these neutrophils is they contain this lysozyme so they can protect us from the bacterial infection now the important thing to keep in mind about the lysozyme is that they are only uh, going to uh, recognize those particular bacteria which have this peptidoglycan layer so there are bacteria which do not have this peptidoglycan layer so the lysozyme would not have any uh, you can see uh, effect on those particular bacteria because of the leak of the peptidoglycan layer and two of the most famous examples of the bacteria which do contain these peptidoglycan layer they are the gram positive and the gram negative bacteria so uh, that means that the lysozyme that would be very much active against these two classes of the bacteria known as the gram positive and the gram negative one now uh, what happens is that this lysozyme is going for the hydrolysis of an important linkage uh, which is known as the beta 1 4 glycosidic bond now what is this uh, uh, 1 4 glycosidic bond for that you need to have uh, an understanding of the uh, structure of the peptidoglycan when you talk about the structure of the peptidoglycan of course that is not the scope of this particular video but generally as you can see that this uh, peptidoglycan layer is made up of uh, repeated uh, carbohydrate units uh, this one, uh, this uh, red one, you can see, uh, this is known as the N-acetyl glucose amine. And this one, uh, whatever the color is, uh, this one is known as the N-acetyl muramic acid. And you can see that these uh, uh, N-acetyl glucose amine and N-acetyl muramic acid, they are making these polymers. And these different polymers, they are actually uh, constituting the uh, peptidoglycan layer of the gram-positive and the gram-negative bacteria. Now this uh, N-acetyl glucose amine and the N-acetyl muramic acid, they are connected to each other by this 1,4 uh, glycosidic bonds. What the lysozyme do is that it is going to break this uh, beta 1,4 linkages between the uh, N-acetyl glucose amine and the N-acetyl muramic acid. And you can very well imagine if you are going to break all of these bonds, that means that the cell wall of the bacteria that is gone, that is destroyed and it will not be able to perform its important functions. Now, uh, if you look at this one, this one is a very clear diagram. If this one is, uh, say, for example, the uh, NAG, this is the complete structure of the N-acetyl glucose amine. This one is the complete structure of the N-acetyl muramic acid. As you can see over here, this is the position number four of the NAM. As you can see over here. 
This one is the position number one of the NAG, the n acetyl glucose amine. And as you can see over here, these two, they are connected to each other. And the lysozyme is going to act on this particular bond, thereby cleaving the linkage between the NAG and the NAM, thereby uh, the, uh, you can say, breaking down the cell wall. Now, when the cell wall, like when the bacterial cell wall that is compromised, it is going to lead to the formation of osmotically unstable cell. What I mean by that is that when the bacterial cell wall that is compromised, the osmotic pressure inside the bacterial cell that becomes unbalanced. And when the osmotic pressure becomes unbalanced, the cell may eventually lyse due to the influx of the water. So this cell wall, this peptidoglycan layer is very important to maintain this osmotic pressure. And when it is gone, because of the entry of the water into the bacterial cell, the cell is going to rupture or it is going to burst. Now, when that is going to burst, that means that the weakening and the rupture of the bacterial cell and the cell wall that is going to cause the bacteria to lose their structural integrity. And this in turn leads to the death of the bacteria. So this is about the lysozyme, the important function of the lysozyme. Uh, in the next video, I'll be talking uh, about uh, another important uh, component that is present in the uh, uh, primary granules uh, and that is known as the uh, elastase. So we'll talk about that in the uh, next video. So if you like the video, please subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, do ask me question in the comment section uh, if something that is not clear to you and do share it with your friends.